Adobe's engineers made the Audition workspace consistent across other Creative Suite applications and customizable. And I want to talk about the customizable aspects of the Audition workspace in this tutorial. We'll start by changing the sizes of the panels. If you put your cursor between two panels here, left and right like that, it turns into these two parallel lines with two arrows coming out of it. That means that you can drag this guy left and right. Doing so changes the sizes of them, shrinks or expands them, depending which way you pull them. If you put it between two panels that are in this vertical orientation, you can lift them up or down. If you put them at the intersection of more than two panels, you get this four-headed arrow that says when you drag here, you're dragging them all at the same time, changing them all as you drag that around. Frequently, you'll want to put one panel that you've got down in a frame here and put it in a different frame. So for example, let's say we want to put the media browser up here with the files panel in this frame. To do that, you simply drag it up there. To drag it up there, you need to get the handle. You need to find the handle. Well, the handle is up here in the tab. Notice that when you hover over the tab, it changes to a little light gray. I'll do it again. There it turns light gray. That's telling you that you can just click on this and drag it. Now, when you drag it, you get these trapezoids or a rectangle. The rectangle says you're going to drop this guy into the frame along with the files panel. If you take one of these trapezoids, you're going to make a whole new frame. So I'll start by putting it in the center there in the rectangle, and that adds the media browser to the same frame as files. If I want the media browser to be in its own frame, I drag it along until it turns into a trapezoid, left, bottom, top, or the right. If I put it on the right here, it's going to add the media browser in its own frame on the right to the right of the files. Now that's kind of compact looking, but at least you know that you can do that. I'm going to put this thing back inside the middle there like that, and that's how you do that. Let's say I wanted to take the effects rack and move it but if I drag it to the left here, notice that it turns green. If I take it to the top, same thing, right toward the top, they get a green line. The bottom is a green line right down there in the bottom right there. And off to the right side, there's a little green line. What happens when you drag it to a green line is that you're going to add it right along the edge of the interface. You've now added the effects rack along the entire right side of the interface because that little green line tells you that's what's going to happen when you drag it there. You can put panels in a floating panel. Let me show you how that works with a frequency display, because that's kind of a logical thing to use. So I'll switch over here to the spectral frequency display for that file. And let's say I want to work with this thing in its own panel, not embedded here, but I want to float it. I would typically float it if I wanted to work on multiple monitors. Let me show you how that works. If you just drag this guy, and notice you can drag it only by dragging the handle here, those little parallel lines of dots. If you drag up here in the tab, it won't work, because this is a drop-down list, not really a tab. So I grab the handle there and I drag it, be dragged around like any other panel would be dragged around. But if I hold down the control key now in Windows or the command key in Mac, notice that it turns into this floating panel. And if I let go of the mouse button before letting go of the control or the command key, it now is a floating panel. And you know, what's the advantage of that? Well, one big advantage of that is that I could slide this fella over to a separate monitor if I had two monitors. And let me show you what a dual monitor system might look like. I'll put that back in there. And I'll switch over to a different workspace. Workspace right now is default, but I'm going to switch over to what's called maximum editing. And that opens up a floating panel like this with all the stuff in it, a mixer and metadata, and all the files that would be all over in this right-hand monitor if I had a second monitor. And I could show you a second monitor, but because we work with only one monitor here in this tutorial, you won't be able to see it. But you get a sense of what happens. You can create a floating panel and drag it off to a second monitor or use the built-in dual monitor workspace. Let me put this back to the default workspace. And by doing that, that resets a few things, but it just sets it back to where we last left the default workspace. If we want to go back to the beginning, we're going, oh my gosh, look at how I've changed this thing. I really don't like what I've done here, and it'll take me too long to get back to the start. I can go back to the default status of the workspace by going over here, clicking this little drop-down list and going reset default. Take me back to the absolute beginning of how the default workspace was set up. So I click that, it'll say, do you really want to do this? Yes, I do. And now we're back to where we started from. When we first opened this up, we were looking at the multi-track session. That's still the editor panel. That's what counts. If I switch back to the multi-track session, it's still the same workspace. Now I was creating that floating panel uh, for a reason, because I like the idea of working in a dual monitor if I had that option. But you can also create a floating panel from scratch. You go over to Window, there are a bunch of panels here that are not displayed right now, starting off with amplitude statistics. Well, the funny thing about amplitude statistics, if you select that, 
it puts it in a floating panel. It doesn't put it in one of these panels down here. If you pick diagnostics, for example, it does put it in this panel, just the way things are arranged. Well, I want to create a floating panel with a bunch of stuff in it that are all kind of diagnostic oriented. So I'm going to take this diagnostic panel and put it in here, which you can do. If you have a floating panel, you can add more than one panel to it. So now we have two. I like the idea of adding one more, so I'm going to add frequency analysis. So we've got three things that basically analyze. Frequency analysis opens up as a floating panel as well. So I'll grab that handle or that tab and put it in the middle of that panel. And now I've got this really cool floating panel with three different diagnostic things in it, which, you know, maybe if I'm working in a single screen workspace like this, it's not all that effective to have it floating around and kind of covering things up. So what happens if you create this lovely floating panel and you want to put it in a frame and you're going, well, all I've got are these tabs. I can't really drag this thing into a frame by dragging these tabs one at a time. Well, yes, you can. Every single frame, including this floating panel, has a little handle on the upper right-hand corner that's for the entire frame, not just for individual panels. So I can take this handle and drag it down here, let's say, and add this to this panel over here or put it on the bottom and have it be a separate frame. You'll notice that I've added those three diagnostic things now in their own frame. And the same is true for any frame here. I've got these four different panels inside this frame, and here's that handle on the right-hand side that I can drag around and add that, have those four different panels show up here in this top one. So let's say you've done all this work. You've got a workspace that suits your purposes. You like it, and you want to make sure that, let's say, if someone else works with Audition, and they have their own workspace. When you come back, you want to be able to switch from their workspace to yours. What you can do is you can save a workspace. Very simple. Just go over to the workspace drop down menu here and then click on this new workspace button. And now you just give it a name. So typically you name it for you and click OK. So now when I come back here, let's say the default workspace is what is currently visible. If I come back, I'll need to reset the default workspace to really make it complete. There we go. And I come back and open this up and I say, well, no, no, I want to go back to my workspace, the one that I'm used to working with. There it is. And we'll make the switch and have these guys show up with all these diagnostics and all the other kind of stuff showing up there. Now, let's say, though, eventually you're thinking, I really don't want this workspace at all. You can delete it. And to delete it, you need to not be in it. You need to be in some other workspace. So I'm going to go back to the default. And now I'm going to go delete workspace. Go to this drop down list, and if I click on just workspace, that'll be it. We're going to get rid of that workspace, and now it won't show up in the drop down list anymore. So, that is how you customize a workspace and then save it for use later.